Welcome to part two of my 3D printed life-size Jabba the Hutt project. In part one, I introduced the basic approach I was going to be taking, which is to hollow out a 3D model that I commissioned, and then cut it up into more than 70 pieces, which I will then glue together like a jigsaw puzzle. I'd recommend watching that video just to get some of the background if you haven't seen it yet, but in terms of progress, in the last video I had printed and assembled the two halves of the head, but not yet glued the two parts together. That was mostly because I hadn't quite figured out how to deal with this small gap that was between the two halves on the one side. Now it's been about a month since I posted that first video, and I hadn't intended to let so much time go between entries, I apologize for that, but I had a few issues that were out of my control. The biggest one was that I was in bed with the flu for more than a week since making the first video, and even after recovering I was kind of too weak to do much work on this project for a while. The other reason is that I had a number of failed prints and issues that made my progress slower than I had expected, I'll get into that in a little bit. So for this update we're going to be printing and assembling this part here on Jabba's body, which is the next layer down. And in terms of the number of pieces this may be the smallest section, but it's also maybe the most complex because it includes his arms and hands and things like that, which presented a few difficulties as we'll see. In terms of the 3D printing involved, it wasn't all that different from what I did in the last section for the head. I did all of the printing on my CR10-S4, which you see here, and on the CR10-S5, which I've fitted with 0.8 millimeter nozzles, as I described in my last video. The shapes of the different sections were somewhat more complex in many cases because of the arms and so forth, and that meant that I would have to use more supports than I did in the beginning when it was mostly just flat sections. In a few cases I did have problems where the support material didn't adhere properly to the build plate. That was mostly because I had failed to enable the uh, support base layers option in Simplify 3D which makes a solid base for the supports to build off of. I would really recommend using that if you want to have anything coming up off of the build plate. And here is an example of something that failed pretty dramatically. We had uh, just a huge amount of spaghetti where the supports were supposed to be because they had uh, failed to adhere to the build plate. I had tried using some tape here, which kind of did work, I think, and helped it save itself. And it managed to miraculously uh, make this support material up here at the top. It may not be immediately obvious by looking at this, but this is actually part of Java's arm that we're looking at here. And the reason it's so weird looking is that I had to cut it in half I originally sized it just a little bit too big even for the build plate of the S5, so I just cut the model in half. Here we have the other part, his hand and the rest of his arm, and I had this layer shift. It actually happened twice. This is my second attempt. I stopped the first print and restarted, but it happened uh, twice in two different parts, so it's not even a problem with the model itself. I can't figure out why this happened. It happened immediately after I changed the filament, that I do know. Uh, I suppose I must have hit it somehow and caused a problem, but I, I was careful not to, so I really don't know why this happened. I didn't really want to have to print this a third time because I had already used a roll of filament and probably a couple of days printing this, so I decided to just uh, go in and try and smooth it out with a Dremel a little bit, and then later on I'm going to fill in any holes with some putty, and I think it'll be just fine. Here we have some of the body pieces already glued together and get a better look at the pieces we were just talking about. There's the weirdly shaped arm piece with the supports that failed and here is the arm that I was just working on. It's not totally fixed yet, but it'll work it'll work fine. I think it as you can see will just glue right on to the side right here. And here we have most of it already assembled except for one final piece. I thought I'd show you a little bit just how these fit together, to give you an idea. I didn't have any problems where uh, the pieces didn't fit together properly as I did with the head and that gap. Actually, everything fit together quite well, generally speaking. What I've been doing is to sand all of the parts that are going to be glued together, just to roughen them up a little bit, and then use the Bob Smith Industries Super Glue, which I've had really good luck with, more than other brands, and it's surprisingly strong when you do that, I'll have to say. I, I would prefer to use epoxy glue for all of this, but I found that it's just too messy and difficult because I can't clamp these together oftentimes, so I have to sort of hold it together, and 
what I'm doing instead is to go back and if there are some gaps between the, the parts, I'll go in and add some epoxy to sort of fill that in. In fact, that's what I decided to do with the head here, where we had that fairly noticeable gap. I just put some duct tape on the underside and then filled it with epoxy glue and it seemed to work just fine. I'm going to go back in with some putty and fix that later. I got a lot of comments on the previous video saying that I should use some sort of expanding foam to support the model or maybe come up with some kind of a supporting lattice inside, but if you actually look at this model in person, it is really sturdy and stable and I don't really have any concerns about it falling apart or anything like that. I mean, it really just has to sit there and not, not fall apart under its own weight, which I think will be no problem. Now it is true that if you look closely in some places, you can see some pixelation in the model, like with the clan tattoo here. You can see it looks a little bit pixelated just because it's not got enough polygons in the model. I'm hoping that I can just maybe apply some body filler or something like that to smooth that out a little bit in the final finishing process. But otherwise, I think it looks quite good and smooth. It's not bad at all. You can't really tell, especially if you stand back a little bit, uh, you can't tell at all that it's been blown up so much. So I'm actually pretty happy with how everything looks so far. One thing I didn't really address in the first video is what I'm going to be doing with this after I'm done with it. I just plan to keep it here in the basement where I have my makerspace and use it kind of as a, a mascot for my channel and for what I'm doing here. But the fact that I am building it in the basement does present a few challenges. The main one is that I have to be able to actually get it out of the basement at some point, both to take it outside to spray paint and just in general, I don't want to build something that is going to be permanently stuck in the basement. You know, if I, if I ever have to move or anything, I don't want to have to destroy it. So I'm going to have to make sure that the pieces I make are uh, not too big to fit up the basement stairs, essentially. And I know that the head por portion here can fit up the stairs. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to divide up the rest of the body. We're going to have to see about that. Also, I have to figure out how I'm going to connect these, if I'm just going to have them resting on top of each other, or if I'm going to have some other means of of connecting them. I thought about magnets or other things like that, but I haven't quite figured it out yet. Before I do the big reveal and show you what the head looks on, like on top of the body, I thought I'd outline some of the problems that I had when printing these pieces. Uh, this one here, I think just sort of stopped for no apparent reason. Maybe there was a little bit of a clog or something. I had on um, this one over here, accidentally used a raft when I printed it and I could not get the raft off to save my life. I tried even using a Dremel with a plastic uh, cutting sort of disc on it and really didn't work very well at all. I ended up having to reprint this entire thing, which was kind of a bummer. I think with this next one, I simply ran out of filament. Now you may ask, why would I run out of filament when there's a filament sensor on the CR-10S? And well, the reason is I stopped using the filament sensor. I had a number of false positives, starting with this one here, where it would stop, and even though it had plenty of filament left, it would stop printing and let everything cool down, and then once I tried to resume it, it wouldn't properly mesh for some reason. It uh, had a big crack in it. I tried this piece again right here, and you can see it actually stopped twice while I was printing this piece, leaving two sort of bad cracks in it. I might be able to fix something like this, but I, you know, I kind of wanted to nail down what the cause of this was, and I would prefer to have a pristine piece as well. So I tried it a third time, and this time, after not using the filament sensor, I ran out of filament. Yeah. This is the filament sensor that I've just disabled by putting a snippet of filament in it. In the past, even if I did have a false positive with the sensor, it was always possible to just recover and restart printing, but with these models for some reason, I'm guessing because they have such thin walls, it almost always leads to some sort of crack. So I'm just, I'm just stopping it for now. So without any further ado, here is the head on top of the body. Now, as I mentioned before, this is just sort of sitting on top of the body. It's not glued on in any way, but you can barely tell that unless you look closely. So that just shows how well these pieces actually fit together, which is one of my main concerns after I had that problem with the head. I'm still not really sure what happened there. Uh, but in any case, 
it doesn't look like there will be much problem with uh, fitting the pieces together moving forward. In case you're wondering how this compares to the Rancor skull that I printed a little while ago, it's way bigger already. And of course, I've only got about mm, one third of it printed maybe at this point. So yeah, that's a pretty big difference. This is easily the largest thing I've ever printed, which I seem to say an awful lot, but it's true. And I'm not sure how I'm going to top this or if I'm even going to try. By the way, if you missed the review I made of the Zinkibot Orca 2 Cygnus 3D printer, I printed some things in flexible filaments on that printer. This one was done with some infill, so it's kind of firm. And I also did one without any infill at all, so it's hollow, and it's very nicely squishy, and <laughs> I just really like this one. Uh, this was printed in Zyro TPU flexible filament. The filament I'm using to print the big guy, though, is from Maker Geeks. I've mentioned before that they are sponsoring this project, and they've provided me with some of their Maker Series PLA. This is White Hot White PLA, which has worked quite well, I think, overall. I give it a thumbs up. Personally, my favorite thing that they offer is the Maker Filament Grab Bag, where you can get two one-kilogram rolls of just about any of their filaments. And if you're choosing something relatively inexpensive like PLA, and you order uh, two of these grab bags, you can get them for as low as $15 per kilogram, which is really quite good for filament. And you don't get to choose the colors you get. That's the only catch, but I actually kind of like that. It's, it's fun to see what you're going to get. And I do a lot of printing where it doesn't really matter that much what color it's going to be. Either I'm going to be painting it or I just don't care from the beginning. So it's fun to get new colors and new uh, filaments that I haven't tried out before. You can also use the coupon code JABA if you click the affiliate link below to get 15% off your order. Thanks again to Maker Geeks for sponsoring this project. I'm not entirely sure when the next episode is going to be coming. I have a lot of printing ahead of me, but I'll do my best to make it relatively quick. I'll see you then, and thanks for watching.